So I often eat pasta when I'm feeling lazy or want it to go super quick and this recipe can actually be done in under 15 minutes. I always want my pastas creamy so I'll go ahead and share my go-to recipe for that. And by the way I'm always using whole wheat pasta because it is higher in fiber, protein and other vitamins and minerals than if you would use white pasta. So while the pasta is cooking I'm making my creamy sauce and to have a creamy meat sauce cashew nuts are key so i'm adding that and today i'm also adding some salt onion powder turmeric and some nutritional yeast for a more cheesy flavor and lemon juice to balance things out some water if you remove the turmeric powder and nutritional yeast you get a base creamy flavor and in this you can add in whatever flavors you like for example you can just have it plain and add sun-dried tomatoes or you can add in smoked paprika powder or yeah, whatever, just be creative. When it is done, it should be looking like this. It is quite thin, but it will thicken up when it's done. When you're draining the pasta, reserve a little bit of pasta water in case you need more liquid. And yeah, then just add in the sauce into the pasta and stir it around on a low to medium heat until the sauce thickens up. Some spinach, I love my greens, you gotta have them somewhere. And then add it gracefully into a bowl. For this budget recipe, we're doing a potato and spinach curry. Curries are so economical because you can use such a small amount of ingredients and focus it all around the spices and the base of onion and spices and add whatever you want. Potatoes are very cheap, spinach is very cheap and depending on the time of year, you could swap it for other vegetables. So you could use green beans, you could use kale, like you can change it up. But spinach is a great one because it's one that we all know and love. So let's get cooking. <laughs> Now we have our chopped peeled potatoes. We're gonna parboil them for 10 minutes before everything else. And don't do it like I did it, put the potatoes in first before you put the hot water in. The key to a delicious curry is to make sure that you're cooking your spices before. I know it's easy to skip this, but you wanna fry your spices so that they get really delicious smelling. So we'll start with a teaspoon of cumin seeds and a teaspoon of coriander seeds. And add a splash of water just to create a bit of a paste. Now we're adding in some chopped tomatoes and frying these for a minute or two. Then add your drained potatoes. And then 250 ml of stock. Hadn't mixed that very well. And two tablespoons of tomato puree. I'm just gonna finish this tube off. And then bring it to a boil and put the lid on. And then let that simmer for around 10 minutes. <laughs> Add your spinach, pop the lid on until it's wilted. And finally, I'm adding in 150 ml of coconut yogurt. Next up, Buddha bowls. I am obsessed with Buddha bowls. My friend and I used to have a company devoted to creating Buddha bowl meal plans. Buddha bowls are amazing. Now, if you're not familiar with Buddha bowls, basically what they are are very 
balanced bowls, so a full entree. It takes after the macrobiotic principles of balanced eating. So there's a grain, a bean or lentil, so a legume, a starchy vegetable, a non-starchy vegetable, typically a green, so kale, bok choy, broccoli, Swiss chard, spinach, whatever, a healthy fat, so that could be tahini sauce, avocado, could be some sort of like coconut based sauce, cashew cream, anything, and a fermented vegetable. Fermented veggies, oh, they're so good. They make things more delicious, but they also help you digest and they also add healthy bacteria to your meal and to your gut. So a Buddha bowl encompasses all of these things but they can take so many different forms. Like last night I had a Buddha bowl that was like a Mexican-y taco inspired sort of Buddha bowl with guacamole, rice, beans, salsa, sweet potato. Sweet potato, I put sweet potato in everything. And some greens. You can do anything you want with Buddha bowls. Um, I'm gonna link to some Buddha bowl recipes down below. I even have a Buddha bowl meal plan that you can check out. Buddha bowls are just great because they make it easy for you to eat a balanced diet. Also, you can meal prep all your ingredients for your Buddha bowl one day of the week and just make different combinations of them throughout the week, which, come on, that's just, it makes your life so much easier. And they're delicious and filling. So, Buddha bowls all the way. And lastly, you need to know how to make a real good stew. Not just a soup, because a soup is, I love soup, don't get me wrong, I love soup but a stew I like even better. It's even more important to know how to cook because it's more filling, typically. So my favorite stews, oh, I love stews. My favorite stew probably is a tikka masala. Tempeh tikka masala is what I like to make. I make it at least once a week and I have been for over a year now. I'm obsessed. I also have this really great recipe on my blog. It's a new recipe for chickpea butternut squash tagine. Okay, QC. So it's not really a tagine because tagines typically are cooked in the cooking vessel that is called a tagine, but it's basically a Moroccan stew and it is so delicious, very easy to make, very filling and balanced. That's the thing about stews. You can put all your beans or your, your tempeh or your tofu or whatever in there and you still balance it with vegetables like sweet potato and beets or whatever, whatever. Having a good stew in your repertoire is essential. So all these recipes are really gonna make it easier for you to cook for yourself, stay feeling nourished and healthy and happy, really maintain a healthy, balanced vegan diet because that's what we all need. Like I said. I think it's fair to say that most people like nachos. I personally love nachos, so I'm always looking for ways to have that nacho experience, but sometimes I want it to be something that is also really nourishing and it makes me feel good at the same time. So a dish that I've been making for years and years is potato nachos, and I love that you can really change this up based on what you have on hand or what you're in the mood for that day. It's balanced with that ratio of carbs, protein, and fat, but it also is just really enjoyable and fun to eat. So it's like a win-win-win across the board, it's just one of those meals that I never get sick of, so I make it all the time on repeat. Now this particular version is kind of a cross between two of my favorite comfort foods, nachos and chili cheese fries. This is kind of a potato nacho version of chili cheese fries. So all you're gonna do is chop up your potatoes. You can do this with any potato you like, including sweet potatoes if you kind of want to change it up. You can use a mandolin, but you want them to be thin so that they get nice and crispy. Do some olive oil, salt, and pepper. You could even do a little taco seasoning on top. That's really good. And then you're just going to bake these until they are nice and crispy. The next step is to warm up your chili. This is gonna go on top and this is gonna be loaded with fiber and protein from the beans and the veggies. It's also gonna add quick flavor, but you don't have to make it yourself. You can definitely use a store-bought version to make this meal easy, or I will put one of my favorite vegan chili recipes in the description box below. This is another meal I make on repeat, so you're kinda of getting six recipes here, but this is a great one on its own as chili with some cornbread and fun chili toppings, but it's also delicious when you turn it into kinda of cheese fries or nachos like this. And I always 
like to layer my toppings because I don't want them all to be on top. I want every single piece of potato to have loads of tasty toppings on top. So I layer on my warm chili, then I add some vegan cheese. This one from BioLife is really good, but any cheese you like will work. Then I pop this into the microwave, or if you want to, if you want to keep the potatoes really crispy, you can do this on a sheet pan and melt the cheese in the oven. So for toppings, I like to focus on creating contrast, and because the base of this recipe is really hearty and spicy and just very savory and rich, I like to cool things down with the toppings. So I complement that with some cool, creamy sour cream. We've got pickled, kind of sweet and tangy red onions, and then something fresh like cilantro or scallions on top. Let me know which one of these five recipes you're excited to try first. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to check out the link for Catalina Crunch in the description box below. Use my code to get that 15% off. And I hope you guys have a really good day. I'll see you soon. Bye.